Yo, what's up guys? Jake out here for episode number two of my orchestral tutorial for my Trike Apocalypse. Uh, before we start, I just wanted to give a quick shout out and say thank you for everyone who watched episode one. I honestly didn't think it would get the reaction that it did, so I really appreciate you guys watching, sharing it with your friends, and I'm glad it was really helpful for, helpful for a lot of you as well. Um, so in episode one, just to recap, I went over the intro and build up, up to the drop, the different plugins I used, how I came up with my chord progressions, and how I layered all the orchestral elements. And in this episode, I want to go over my leads in the drop, but more importantly, how I incorporated those same orchestral elements in the drop as well. So with that being said, I'm just going to play back how the drop sounds, and then I'm going to go over how I did everything. <laughs> So that's uh, pretty much the drop there. Um, part two repeats and uh, has some variation as well on some of the chord progressions um, or the chord stabs, I should say. So my first hits on the drop, like on the downbeat, will always be some big orchestral hit um, and I'll layer it with a bunch of stuff. So I have some horns here. I have my choirs, uh, which I went over in episode one from Omnisphere. And then I have some organs here, which are also Omnisphere. And I have another brass here. It's a little bit more body from uh, the one on top. And then I have the full orchestra or orchestrator from Symphobia 2, which is one of my favorite plugins or libraries from Contact. So well, let me play that again. Yeah, so that's like a full orchestra right there. And then um, I have this little cashmere layer on top as well. Just to give it a little bit. There's a, uh, a harmony, a third harmony in there. So I kind of like how it gives it that extra, extra sauce. Um, so after that, um, I usually like to have those on the first hits. So you'll see them repeating here. And then every eight bars, I'll have a little uh, turn, which is pretty much the uh, a diminishing chord here. So what the diminishing chord is, um, here's some music theory for you guys, and this is pretty prevalent in classical music too, is the diminishing chord is usually the chord right before it resolves back to the root key. In this case, the root key is F. So the diminishing chord uh, is usually a semitone right below the fundamental, which is the root key, um, which I use in a lot of my songs. It's it kind of gives it this like very eerie, haunting, uh, don't know where it's going to go kind of vibe. Um, so it kind of leaves you in suspense, and then it resolves right back to um, the fundamental. So it sounds something like... So for the orchestral stuff, solo it out, it's... So I do want to go over how the bass line would be underneath those chord stabs. I pretty much got two bass lines here. Uh, they're both two kind of really nasty saw, saw basses. Uh, this is one of them. And then this is the second one. And that second one is actually the, the lead from uh, Artifacts, the collab I had with Blank last year. Uh, shout out Blank one time. I've actually got this kind of hard trap screech <laughs> underneath all this too, just to give it some more white noise too. But it's barely noticeable, but I kind of like it. Just gives it some more grit. Um, so obviously the first two hits are just... Um, are just F, which is the root key, the fundamental of the song, um, for this hit right here. And then here as well. And then these diminishing chords I was talking about. Um, so technically the diminishing chord is one semitone below the root key, which the root key in this case is F. So one semitone down would be E. Uh, so you can have the bass line in E, but I like to bring it down... Uh, five semitones from the fundamental, which in this case would be a C. So this is what it would sound like. 
So that's the root, and then it goes to diminishing. Which, together with the orchestral stuff. So that uh, fifth down, or five semitones down, or semitone, seven semitones up from the root is usually the key to that diminishing chord, which makes it sound like super dark and haunting. Um, and then I bring it right back to um, to F, which is the root right afterwards. So that's how the bass line goes underneath. So I do want to go over how I did uh, the leads here. Uh, the leads were a lot of audio manipulation, um, some basically one shots some virtual right one shots that I uh, did some texture warping and stretching. Um, so this is kind of the first hit here. So that's, I think, originally. Yeah, so this is the original sound. And then I kind of change it to this, which um, can do a little warp here, do some, uh, do a little texture, uh, choose a texture mode here. And then what I like to do is you can stretch this out and it won't work unless you stretch it out. Um, so if you usually do like a times two and then stretch out the sample, um, I'll take these out for now. Uh, so that's how it sounds stretched out. And then you can just kind of mess. So let me loop this here and then I can show you guys what this does here. So as this is looping, I'm going to mess with the grain size and the flux here. And then you can also automate it too. So you can kind of draw like a cool little um, pattern. So once you get like a sound, uh, the amounts here, I like to keep it under 25 because the more you, uh, the higher you get, the kind of, and it starts getting a little bit uh, stuttery. So let's say you keep it at like 13, 14, whatever, 17, and then you can start drawing in the grain um, size too. So. Or upside down, or like, you know, the other way around here. And then once you get that sound, or, you know, the sound that you like, uh, you would pretty much hit it, Command-J, consolidate it, and then bring it back down, uh, divide by two, so it comes back to the original length, and now that's the sound you have. It's a little bit it's a little bit different than the original sound. So obviously, the more you stretch out, the more you automate the grain size, uh, you can get some cooler sounds that way. So I'm just going to go ahead and undo all this. And get back to the normal sound here. There we go. Uh, actually, there we go. Okay, cool. So altogether, the leads, I'm going to solo out the leads here, and it includes the bass line in there as well, um, is... So... I oh, my drops I usually use kind of the same technique here. I like to do like an A and B drop where the part A is you know its own thing and then part B is completely different with some new leads. So that's where I introduce these leads here, these little sixteenth note sixteenth uh, note leads, which is just uh, something I found in Serum. Just added this little uh, rack afterwards, just some OTT, some glue, saturate it, make it dirtier, and I probably took out the low end. Yeah, and then kind of just bumped up these uh, mids a little bit. So without this chain. So yeah, kill a lot of the low end and make it just a little bit more distorted and gritty. Um, and then layered with a, a secondary layer of that. So it gives it some more high end. Um, and then... All together, you kind of get this here. So that's pretty much the drop in this song. Um, so I do want to go over uh, drop two as well. Um, cause I do a little bit of a different thing here with the, uh, uh, with the chords here on this, on this turn after his eight bars. So I'll play it out. So 
So I I do two hits here uh, that goes from the C sharp, I believe, to um, I think the C. Uh, yeah, so, so it goes from. So there's that there's that diminishing uh, diminishing chord again that I was talking about earlier, and then I do have this little uh, bell here that I I didn't do in the second drop, but I did do in the first drop. So I'll go back to that kind of like solo, not solos, but everything kind of drops out, and you just hear a brass, a full full orchestrator, and a bell. So it kind of gives it like a moment to chill a little bit, and then kind of sucks back in. So. <laughs> And I and these church bells, I mentioned in the first uh, first episode. I love these things; they're super. Um, <clears throat> they're, uh, they're they've got a lot of. I had to EQ a lot of the uh, the mids out or like kind of the highs out here because they kind of distort too. Um, but I I love these bells. I I use them in almost every song as well. So that is pretty much it for both drops. The ending, obviously, I uh, use the same chords that I used here and goes into... Um and my outros, I always like to bring in a piano, just kind of um, resolve everything and make everything kind of airy and nice and pretty. Uh, so what I have here is I have the I have the um, staccato, the full orchestrator reverbing out just to have a longer tail, just to kind of fill up the atmosphere. Same with this full uh, cashmere sample. Um, it's reverbed out a bit. You have these horns. This the choirs. Which also kind of reverb out in the organ. And then the main thing that's dragging out at the end is this kind of nicer, more less aggressive choir that I have. And then uh, after I brought in those choirs here I kind of li like to layer it with the cello and then also uh, add these outro pianos too so And these top ones are just bass notes here just to kind of um, fill in that low low register. And then the vocals on top. So all together you get. Yeah, I always like to kind of uh, finish off with like a little piano roll here at the end. So I think that's pretty much it for episode two. Uh, as always, thank you guys for tuning in. If you guys have any questions about this video at all, or if I left anything out, if there's a video in the future you guys want me to do on a specific song or technique, uh, please feel free to leave me a comment, and I'll be more than happy to answer you guys and do my best to help you guys out. So thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe below, and I will see you guys next time. Peace. Peace.